Wind vane self steering. Why? Well, to conquer the tyranny of the helm. Steering a sailboat on a long cruise means the crew can't do anything else. And steering can be hard work. The wind is what propels us, so why not let it steer too? There are many wind vane designs. This is the Cape Horn Integral Servo Pendulum Steering Gear, acclaimed the most elegant of them all. My beloved Sailomat 800, now in the hands of a fellow cruiser with big sailing plans, took me 10,000 miles without a complaint and entirely hands off. Like most vane gears, it connected its apparatus on the stern by a system of control lines through the cockpit to a drum on the wheel. But ah, the Cape Horn has no visible control lines. Yes, the Salamat had a whole jazz band hanging off the stern, and so do other popular self-steering systems. Did I say the Cape Horn is simply elegant? Yeah, but here's where the sausage is made. Below decks, in a hidden factory of hard-working control lines. Here we are making our very first tack with the Cape Horn. A simple port to starboard. We'll just force it around. Changing the lines. <laughs> to set the course, just turn the steering vane so it stands up straight. Then tune the sail plan so it stays that way. <laughs> well, that worked. Oh, I know what's wrong. So I didn't trim the gentleman enough. confounding things about um, testing your new wind vane in uh, perfect conditions like this is that there are gaps in the wind. In other words, the wind is blowing 10 knots one minute, it changes direction 20 degrees, it lulls down to 4 knots, and uh, we have to be aware that the wind vane really says, you know, what do you want me to do? The wind keeps moving around, changing speed and direction, and I'm just going to follow it. Most self-steering vane gears just bolt onto the transom, but the Cape Horn famously requires drilling a big hole in your boat something we are otherwise encouraged to avoid. Uh, you need to come down. Right, I'm just going to get now, how's that look? Uh, that's pretty good today. Okay.
really. Okay. Yeah, Russ, a little to uh, that away. I will take this tape off so you can tilt the tube. Is that vertical? Actually, they both are. Damn. Wow. That's because I'm standing in the cockpit. <laughs> well, <laughs> If I get out of the cockpit, it'll be yeah, canted but... forward. For aesthetics, I think that we should lower that so the tubes are horizontal. Sure. Um, but, but, but what was your point about the, oh, well, this see, fitting? See how they fit up against. Oh, that's right. The point was... The brackets have to be... They're not f flush to this. They're not flush to that. Is there a solution could, to that? Well, you can... I was just thinking you actually could... Put it on the vertical member, put it yeah. On the vertical member there, and we can extend this one a little bit more. That'll, that'll fix him for criticizing our work. The Cape Horn is custom fabricated since every sailboat is different. The price of elegance is a system of quadrants, turning blocks, and control lines to be epoxied in place in awkward locations. Dan and Kika of Sailing Uma have an excellent installation video, and I've written a candid account of my own job. I'll put the links to both in the YouTube description. So here's a wind vane performing pretty much the way it should. It's more or less straight up and down, and we're sailing along nicely to windward. We have 14 knots over the deck. That means probably 10 or 11 knots of wind, and our boat speed is six knots. And if you take a look at the sail, oddly enough, the main sail, has a bit of a luff in it. Wind vanes are very sensitive to sail set. If you were steering this boat by hand, you would probably trim the main some more, which would make you heel over some more, which would make the rudder work harder, and it's a good question whether you'd be going any faster. Let's see what happens when I trim the main to remove the lock. I just raised the traveler up about a foot from where it was before. We heeled over another few degrees. And now the vane is holding on one side. It's not vertical very much because it's fighting the new weather helm that I introduced by trimming the mainsail. Let's alter course a little to head more downwind. Good, now we're on a broad reach. Just by turning the wind vane angle about 20 degrees, we're holding course pretty well. And on a broad reach with a boom out still further, the vane has no problem keeping course. And dead downwind is the most difficult course of all for self-steering vanes, uh, but most of them do quite well, especially if we uh, had a chance to wing out our Genoa jib. And I'm not setting the whisker pole today. To release the cape horn, just disconnect the steering lines and lift the pendulum blade out of the water.
and in fact under these conditions just around my home port I would ordinarily just use the wheel pilot for this a little Ray Marine device engage the clutch push one button and it makes you go in a straight line without any of the muss and fuss of sailing a wind vane which is what we're doing always sailing the wind vane in fact it feels more like sailing the wind vane than sailing the boat wind vanes don't work when the wind dies specifically when the boat speed drops below two or three knots and the moving air is no longer sufficient to move the pendulum arm and if it did move it the boat wouldn't be going fast enough for it to transmit its force to the quadrants below this little fella never complains he does squeak and that's the result of some salt buildup from the atmosphere in here and there's a handy irrigation hole to do that you just squirt some fresh water in once in a while which stops the squeaking why all things considered push button steering steering by the wind no need for the skipper to do anything Essentially, what we're sailing is a Tesla. <laughs>